Um, we're going to stay on the double-sided coin, but we're going to go back to medicine uh, because this is unethical doctors. Mm. And we're going to talk about another guy maybe you want to remember. His name is James Marion Sims. He's the father of modern gynecology. Sims developed pioneering tools and surgical techniques related to women's reproductive health. More specifically, he invented something called the vaginal speculum, a tool used for dilation and mm -hmm. examination. This is a vaginal speculum. Yep. So it looks like a, sort of like a, hey, how are you? I'm a, a duck. vaginal it looks, speculum. It looks like a duck. It does, yes. yeah, yeah. A, a metallic duck. So, but back then, when you were trying to give a woman an internal exam, the vagina was considered uh, gross. Not gross, but it was sort of like taboo. They really didn't know how to do it. So this guy had taken a bent pewter spoon and he had shucked the clam a little bit like he had opened up. And that way he was able to go in. He wound up creating this thing where you can kind of insert, open up, and then kind of do what you need to do through the opening. So this is a speculum. Yeah. It's unbelievable how easy it is to purchase a speculum. Not mm. that you, I mean, not that you're going to smoke crack with it or anything, but they say it's a big fetishist item. Yep. So when I went yep. on Amazon... Two days ago, I had 16 different options to get it to me within 24 hours. So I got this one. Is that is that is. the Cadillac of septulums? I, I, I was spe uh, speculums. Speculums. I, yeah, I went with the one that was $14. So anyway, this is what he in, in, this is what he introduced, and it's still used. Uh, Andy, this is still used today, right? They it's like, yes. it's yeah. like a car jack for yeah. a vagina. Yes. Now they keep them in warming trees. Yes, thank Ooh, God. See, I like that. Yeah. It's the little things. Yeah. yeah. You could use this for like a colonoscopy the too, right? The things. Yeah. Oh, my God. I get. I don't know. Oh, the you whole could. Idea is I mean, you wouldn't get very far with a colonoscopy. Then. <laughs> no, I'm saying if you oh, need to you get the tube. Oh, you can force it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either way. So he he invented this. He invented the uh, the <laughs> the speculum. It's used for dilation and examination. He also pioneered a surgical technique to repair something called vesicovaginal fistula. It's a common 19th century complication of childbirth in which a tear between the uterus and the bladder caused constant pain. In 1876, yeah, <laughs> he was named president of the AMA, the American Medical Association. And this is why, and believe me, it rips births, women apart. I did not want him in the room. God bless you. <laughs> It rips women apart. It's fucking. Don't, uh, don't they how staple the it? fuck did Miss Higgins have 18? I heard they staple uh, it together. There's some sewing. I wouldn't, no, I didn't do yeah, 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 yeah. Nope. Right. Uh, I heard yeah. because women have like oh, less, uh, less nerve endings. Oh, and smaller oh, brains. They the can't feel it. They just staple them shut. I just, every time I think of childbirth, I think of that fucking pyramid that they used to lower the guys on that you uh, would yeah when, yeah when yeah that's like a septulum thing. a little bit yeah sort of yeah so this guy yeah, speculum it, like, i'm yeah. sorry yeah <laughs> I, know, I've, I've, I, I stopped with it yeah, in yeah. my head i've put that it's septulum and <laughs> right. that's what i'm gonna call it forever. right i should have circled it on the script so again so we're with uh james marion sims so he developed he developed the speculum from a pewter spoon and he also discovered this um technique to repair this tearing, this fistula that happens sometimes during uh, childbirth, and it causes leakage and constant pain in women who suffer from it. Is that where the phrase, she was born with a pewter spoon in her vagina comes from? <laughs> yes, that's yeah. exactly <laughs> why it was. Yes, it was. <laughs> in 1876, he was the president of the AMA. In 1880, he became president of and the like American that. Gynecological Society. She really did like that yeah. one. Yeah, a silver spoon and a pewter spoon. Uh, he has a half a dozen statues dedicated to him around the country. But the one in Central Park right here was removed in 2018, and it's set to be reinstalled near his grave in Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn at some point. Greenwood Cemetery is where my father-in-law has been laid to rest also. But why was that statue taken down from Central Park? Why was Dr. James Marion Sims, who found a way to, uh, to repair fistula, he found a way to look inside a vagina with some degree of class. He sent, Why was it? He sent unwanted texts of his penis. <laughs> he did. He to did. his assistant. Right. Why was this guy who did all that shit in and around the 18, I don't know, 18, mid-1800s, called 1860 and that's where the bad part comes in. Sims's research that he did to create all this stuff was done almost exclusively on enslaved black women. And he did it without anesthesia. My God. Similar to Pincus and the birth control story, Sims cared more about the experiments than providing therapeutic treatment. Unlike the Pincus story, Sims practiced medicine 100 years prior in the mid-1800s. So nobody gave a shit that he caused untold suffering by operating under the racist notion that black people didn't feel pain. 
they didn't deserve fucking first of all in his defense there wasn't a lot of anesthesia around but yeah. there was some mm-hmm. he decided to not give it to his test subjects because he thought they did not feel pain 